Okay, Tom. So thank you again for your patience, though of course this one wasn't really due for a while, but I have I have my reasons. There's reasons for me to get into this one right now, um, and they're good reasons. So let's. Ha! Just lost a spring bar. Uh, these are. This is a rare piece. Rare piece. Rare piece. Okay, Tom, so let's get it going. I already have your bracelet off. I want to go through and clean up all that stuff. A rare bracelet. Okay, so I got that. The case, uh, that's already a new crystal I put in there. I'm still going to take everything apart. Um, there's really, there's nothing for it but to jump in. Um, so the usual thing this one these always tend to have lived pretty active lives and this one is no different um, but it's not it's not bad we just need to we need to get it going that's what we need to do let's, let's just get that winding weight off of there unlike the last one I did this one is um, it's physically intact come on Come on. Don't make me get out. I'm going to have to get out the big guns. Okay. There's got to be another way. Hang on. Now, first things first, we see if we look at this watch, it's a bit of a cobble in that this bridge is marked 7015 instead of 7017. Functionally, they're the same. It doesn't matter, but I have an original 7017A bridge, and so that is going to go in place up there. Exciting stuff. Okay, so balance hands are off, and now we are going to a bunch of little things we have to pin. These 701 blank chronographs are interesting. Some of the things that they do that Seiko did on them, I'm not quite sure why they did them. Like this little keeper diddly thing. Um, my suspicion, of course, is that it's to hold. They were getting a lot of flex out of this bridge, and so they wanted to hold that down. But that's just a theory. Let's get that out of here. The nice thing about these, though, is that they used the architecture from the 7000 series everywhere, and there's a ton of commonality, which is nice. Because it means that, you know, you don't, you don't really have to worry so much about finding a lot of the core parts of this, the balances, pallet forks, that kind of stuff. The things that tend to go bad, there's a lot of them. Which is good. And the chronograph wheels on these are stronger design, so that makes it nice, because they don't tend to fail as often. All right. It rotates in both conditions. It rotates running, rotates stopped. That's good. Uh, I'm seeing a bit of a warp in that, in that plate there. I don't know. We'll see if that's actually warped or what's going on. Let's Pull that bridge. See what we're gonna see. Okay, we got us a uh, this with the double line screw. That means that it is of course reverse thread. Righty Lucy. That comes out. These tend to wear pretty heavily right here, but that isn't bad.
there we are. So these again, these uh, these are cam driven. So there is no there isn't a pillar wheel that's got a cam right here. Just click 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 click, and these this is a single spring lever part. There's the chronograph wheel, and you can see it's a it's both a simpler construction and a stronger construction. It doesn't have a date finger on it. Um, it's got these nice, nice six fingers instead of the, the weird double O, almost like U-joint style thing on the other one. Let's see if we've got all the bits. Should I click your lever? Yeah, that looks intact. Let's get this going. That was a reset hammer. There's the little clicker diddly that goes underneath that. This is the on off for the cam. Click, 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 click. And so now we're down to the next plate. Oh, and this is the rather free floating spring and click combination. Let's get that off of there. Come on. It's interesting to see one of these that doesn't have water damage. These almost always are rusty. I mean the whole thing, not just this particular part. Would you come out of there? Sigh. Ah. Oh well, I got it. Let's see now. Okay, so the way this works, you've got the cam here and the, the the operating levers here, which is a single piece, is held down by one of the screws for this plate. So, It's interesting also talking about the commonality is these this plate has the basically this entire setup has the the architecture um, for where you could put in um, minute counter and hour counter wheels for like a 7016 uh, but they're, they're obviously they're not there I've always wondered if one could swap this across I bet you could So there you have it, right there. You can see the cam being held cleanly in that sprung operating lever. It's just such a simpler system. Look, there's no there's no extra screws holding it down, none of that stuff. It's a, it really is a marvel of economy. So there's the cam. Here's your spring-loaded operating lever. And you know, you compare this to the SUA 6138, 6139. You have separate pieces, operating levers, um, extra springs that run them, all this other stuff, and uh, Dimey just stamped out a piece, which is frankly impressive. All right. Whoops, I forgot a screw. Nope, no, oh no, I didn't. Look at that from another angle. Again, no rust. Isn't that nice? All right. There is your train. Much, much simpler. In a 7016, you've got uh, you've got twinned up double stacked wheels and all kinds of other things. But there is the chronograph wheel. There it is. All of its glory. Third wheel. Escape wheel. There's your mainspring barrel. I'll open that here in a little bit. 
And there's your main plate. Oh, that's definitely stiff. This should, this should turn easily. No, it doesn't. Well, I'm looking forward to finding out why that happens. Let's see. Well, it's still pretty gloomy. Let's get that bridge off of there. And that screw was loose. What? No, thank you for offering, but I'm all set. Okay, guess what? I have a superpower. Oh, you have a superpower. What's yeah. that? Um, I don't cry when I cut onions. Well, you don't cry when you cut onions. That's a heck of a it's superpower. Only, it's, I, I, my eyes blind, but I don't really cry. Okay, well, Widow, Willow, I am, I'm working, so you got to leave me be. Okay, I don't know. But thank, you, thank you for letting me know that. As always, the easy part is taking them apart. It's always the challenge, putting them together and making sure that they're correct. That's always always the fun part. Come on. Yes, good. Good. I was worried about that a little bit. I was like, gosh, I hope this isn't a 7015 movement in here, but it's not. It's got these, it's got this sort of diafix bridge in here. And that is, uh, yeah, this is a little hazy. Definitely can see that. But the nice thing also about these dining movements is that not only are they fully jeweled, they're all metal. No people complain about plastic. No plastic here. None. this thing down again. There's our center wheel. Okay. Let's get the die shock out. It goes into the basket. You know, we've got some more haze here. Look, there's that rust I was wondering about. Because when you're when you're putting together diafix and diafix settings, uh, they are they can be amazingly time consuming. Little teeny tiny springs, little teeny tiny spots of lubrication held. All this, all this junk has to come apart. Gosh darn it! Would you stop that? Otherwise, the stuff is just going to go everywhere. There, I'll take that off because there's a there's a circlet, there's a click spring under here that goes kapoink. If you're not careful, and I don't want anything going kapoink. Alrighty, well, stripped apart, and now I gotta go over everything carefully, and I've got to disassemble the other train bridge and get all the stuff off of it, and then I'll put this together. We'll clean it, and we'll start reversing the process. Okay, well, finally, gonna have the fun parts. You know, fun is important. Just as Bart Simpson says, fun things are fun. Okay. 
everything's all nice and clean, which is just what we want. Right on. Okay, well, let's start uh, putting it together. Okay, well, that's about, oh, maybe 70, 75% power. That took a lot of work to do. Boy, that took a lot of work. I had to, I didn't have much on the video about the, the post-cleaning restoration because I just got into this cycle of craziness of finding one problem and then fixing that and that pushes another problem. When watches like this that lived the life that this one did, they, they tend to have these sort of cascades of issues and every single one has to be chased down. And every one that gets chased down might push another one out of uh, out of where it needs to be and it ju you just go round and round and round and round and round and it, so it took a lot of work and I'm, I wish that I'd gotten more filming done on the on the resurrection but getting that took a crazy amount of work but it has excellent positional accuracy and amplitude cannot complain okay let's do the final okay Tom oh at long last clean as clean can be I mean, it definitely still shows, you know, wear and some of its history, but it's, it's clean and it's original. Everything's there. You could potentially polish the case a little bit, but the case lines are all nice and sharp. Loom is good. Loom is original. Hands are original. Cat is bonking my stand because she's hungry. Uh, but there it is. Uh, the only thing you're going to see, these sweep hands are pre-keyed to the to the chronograph wheel. So what that means is that they're set how they're set. Sometimes things bend a little bit over the years and this one certainly did. It resets ever so slightly to that side. There's no way that I'm aware of to change that without causing any real damage. So hopefully that is okay. But I've done my best for you. Like I said, it was it had some funk going on. It was funkadelic. But I've had this watch for a very long time. I am very glad that it is going to a good home, and I hope that you enjoy it. And I thank you so very, very much. Okay, Tom, that's about it. Oh, let me get this video uploaded.